Hello everyone, I'm Lady Calamir. I welcome you to my presentation. I'm doing my 254th presentation and this will be on the Slavic goddess Lada. Lada is the goddess of summer. She's the goddess of life and love and beauty. She is the wife of the last Slavic god I did, Svavog. So she is the wife of Svavog and mother of different deities, including Harun. So here's the thing about Lada. There are debates around scholars. Some of them say that she is basically not a goddess because her name comes from the rhythms and the songs, the words of la da, la do, la da, la do. And this phrases were made during uh, songs of love and, and songs of happiness and stuff. Now others say no, that she's pretty much like a goddess made by the Christians to assimilate the heathens, pagans, under their religion and their rule and their control. So they made this goddess up and warned people not to worship any of the gods and goddesses. Like they described Chernobog and Belobog, where Belobog was the old good god and white god, and Chernobog was the black god and the old evil god, in which they used these words, these statements, to convert the pagans to their, what they thought was the one true god. However, others say that Lada is a goddess. But it was the Christians that penned these down. So she's also been said, no, she's actually... So the Christians used, like, the Byzantine idea of a goddess, like Aphrodite, and say, that, oh, she's... She's every she she is a pagan, but you need to turn to Christianity. Which, um, and I'll I'll be honest, if I didn't think she was a goddess, I wouldn't have gotten this statue. And I believe that she is a living goddess. She lived on before, and she lives on today. Others like to compare her to Aphrodite, to Freya, Freya, and she is not Freya. She is not Aphrodite. They are not the same deities. They may have similar things, but they are not exactly carbon copy of each other. They're not even a carbon copy of each other. So... Lada, wife of Svavog, mother of different gods and goddesses. She protects girls, young teen, female teenagers, and young women. She is a goddess that it protects couples. She protects unions and she protects marriage. She is a goddess of marriage. Max, come on up. You were up here. That was Maximus, by the way, that was here. So she is, she rises in the spring, the vernal equinox, but she represents life in full bloom. If you were to put her maiden, warrior, mother, crone, sovereign, queen, I would put her as the mother, the mother goddess. She is a goddess of love. 
of sexuality and sexual appetites. She is a goddess of fertility for the crops, the fertility for your animals. And sorry. And the fertility of humans. She protects babies. She protects the unborn in the womb. She is a goddess of all children, especially the female. But she protects all children. Do you want to come up here? Max, come on up. So she deals with the growing of ag. She also is a goddess that involves herself with the growing of agriculture. She is a goddess of prosperity, abundance. She is a, a goddess that deals with uh, happiness, wholeness, and well-being. She is a goddess of... She also deals with luxuries. She is also used in prayers and spells for money. She is... Pretty much the most potent, one of the at least one of the po potent female goddesses. Now, some people conflate her with the goddess of Earth, Mokosh, and Mokosh is an Earth goddess, and she does deal with moistness and uh, water. But Lada is not Mokosh. But some people like to say, "Oh, they're the same thing." So, Lada Lada is important for life. She is the growth of life. She protects life. She is life. She is light. She is part, part of Svavolg's idea of order. She, as Svavog, deals, he deals with marriage, but she deals with the wife. She deals with the mother. She deals with the matriarch power. So, she... is linked to the astrological sign of Taurus and her planetary powers deals with Venus as well as the Earth but she is linked to Venus so, so she also is considered one of the divine twins Sometimes, okay. So here's another why people say she's like Freya. 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 Freya, I should say. Is because she has a twin called Lado. Lada and Lado. Where Frey, Frey, Frey would be Lado and Freya would be Lada. Others say that Lado is not her twin but her son. So again, the Slavics were, you had all different parts of Europe. It wasn't just a small little, you know, closed off part. This, the Slavics were all the way from Russia to Ukraine, Belarus. I mean, 
Germany was the next door neighbor. Lada is respected even among the Balts. Lada is used in love spells and friendship spells, especially uh, to find yourself a mate. Lada is used to protect all children in spells and to watch over women for protection for women that have been raped she is a comfort she is those who have been raped in the past or sexually abused Lada is the woman the goddess female of comfort for little girls that grew up in a broken home any children actually growing up in a broken home but also girls who have you know lived through abuse have a home with Lada have comfort in her And there is a story that even recalls that the goddess Lada that helps Vavog to make the world, that she tied the knot to Svavog. Others say, say that she's also a, a friend, maybe even companion to Jarillo. So there are ceremonies that were held in honor of this goddess to help one pick a spouse or one to get married. It's uh, in Serbia. So in Serbia it's called the, the Kralgis. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Kralgis. And it's also, it's also, well, it, it deals with, with picking a spouse, sorry. Oh, so, Lada is she, her symbols. So her animals is the male rooster an ant eagle a fox so her plants no trees or the uh, peony plant a daisies linden and cherry cherries so is she approachable very much so 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 very much so she's very approachable she's not she's not a dark goddess She's more on the lighter side. <laughs> Max just wants to be seen. Right, Lord Maximus? This is Maximus. He's here to help me remember things about the goddess. So she... She's also, her influence was also seen in Ukraine. Now, the earliest written record of her worship 
the Lada coat go, dates back to 14, 15th century. 15th century. When the Catholic, the Polish church authorities, were trying to stop the worship of the pagan gods and goddesses. So, there's also, uh, I don't know how, his last name is Gazelle, and he wrote about, he, he wrote about Lada in, nine, in, in oh, sorry, 1674, I almost said 1974, 1674, where she was, dis where she was, uh, Worshipped and venerated during the time of Volodymyr the Great. So people would worship her and celebrate uh, colorful and lively festivals and rituals and games. They would play games in her honor and making it part of the springtime rituals. And the anticipation for full on summer. So, again, there are Slavic people that are worshipping her. And as you can see, she also shares this sign with Slavog. As you see her symbol right here. And here she is holding a baby. It shows, this is showing her motherly aspect where she's holding a baby. She is a god. If you say God is dealing with life, preservation, and death, she deals with life and preservation. If you're dealing with creation, sorry, cre creation, nurturing, and destruction, she deals with nurturing as well as creation. She deals with order. She is seen as very beautiful. Matriarchally at times, but beautiful or, or youthful with long flowing blonde hair. Sometimes her hair is braided up into a crown. Other times it's showing her hair like this. And she has uh, flowers. She wears a, cr a crown of flowers on her head. She is deals with spells of beautification and beauty. She deals with anything that is soft on the eyes. So if you look at her name, where it comes from, Lod, which has ver different various meanings in the Slavic languages, and there are dialects, different dialects of the Slavic, different languages and dialects. In, in, Czech, in Czechoslovakia, or Czech, it, it means to know and understand. It also means order as well as harmony in Polish okay so from Poland in Polish la, it comes from a uh, word meaning charming or to charm order as well as beauty beauty and beautiful so she represents longing and eroticism. So she's very erotic. And like I said, she protects lovers. She is the overseer of the harvest. When people harvest their, their fields, she is the overseer.
she is a goddess dealing with happiness. So when you feel sad or depressed, of course, you know, reach out to someone, even if it's just a friend or a life coach, a therapist, psychiatrist, reach out to someone. But she deals with happiness. She deals with cheer. During times of doom and gloom, she brings hope. She brings uh, trust. She brings happiness. Even if it's fleeting, during times of darkness, she can help you to feel peaceful within. She deals with peace and care. She's a goddess of TLC, tender loving care. So, she is the goddess of the family unit. Doesn't matter if it's two fathers, two mothers, a mother and a father. She deals with the family. She is goddess of song and dance. She is a goddess of food and feast. She nurtures the body, she nurtures the mind, and she nurtures the soul. How long have I been talking? 21 minutes. Wow, it only feels like 10. So, what would you give this goddess? What would you give her? Give her fruits. Give her sweet wines. Give her interesting IPAs or just a nice glass of ale. Give her mead. Give her sweet wines. Give to the goddess Lada breads, milk, wheat, and cereal. Give her grain bars. Give her candy. She, you can't go wrong with chocolate. Flowers, beautiful flowers. Give her ribbons of, make ribbons for her, colorful ribbons. Give her cakes, give her honey, give her honey cakes. Give her something from your garden. Give to the goddess cookies. Give to the goddess sweets. Make a poem or make a song for her. Play some music or dance for her. Think of her when you do your makeup, when you do your hair. Think of her when you beautify yourself. Give to the goddess beautiful perfumes and beautiful scented oil. Give to this goddess beautifully scented incenses. I can think of Nag Champa or rose incense, especially flowery incense and oils and perfumes. Give to her beautiful cosmetics, some cosmetics. Give to her You know, beautifully scented lotions. Give her little pieces of jewelry. Give her... Oh boy. Give her... Um, he just threw me off fruit pies or a fruit salad so those are some of the things that you can give to her 
make her altar. It could be like something like this, or it could be very beautiful. You could put an arc of flowers, whether it's real or fake. I prefer fake because I have cats. You know, oh, I have, you know, cats. Some cats get into everything, but you can make it beautiful. This is just a temporary altar. Give her colors that represent summer. She represents interconnectedness of life, of all life, or connection to our family, our animals, and our friends. So she represents love of all types of love, platonic love and sexual love. She represents love, a love for a mother, for a child, a love for a sister, for another sister, a love for one coven member to another coven member. She represents love in all its glory and all its beauty. She is the goddess of peace, harmony. Trust and understanding, caring. She is a goddess that will help a, a girl to become a woman. To take care of ourselves and our family. To be able to be either a stay-at-home mom or a working mom, a career mom. Or even a woman choosing to be on her own and not be tied up in a relationship in modern times, of course. So she represents, I mean, your children could be my children or my furry babies. So I'm their mother, I'm their provider. She helps one to become a provider and a caretaker if they need to be on a caretaker, right? Furry baby, it's Lord Maximus again. So she represents a goddess, a mother of civilization. Rusovog also is civilization. She's also part of being civilized. She's part of the growth of civilization into something better. She is the mate where Svavog is the patriarch she is the matriarch. She is a benevolent deity and she's linked closely to mother nature. She is part of mother nature. So Lada also has a con the, the, the etymological <clears throat> connections to the European word meaning lady. She is the divine connection between humans and nature and animals. She is the divine connection between all things, interconnectedness. Ow, my neck. So, she is a, uh, or what can I say? She is a goddess of 
coming into your own power. She's the she comes into she helps men get their feminine side on, but she also helps women to connect to their feminine side. As Svavol can help a woman connect to the masculine side, and Svavol can help a man to to really connect with his male nature. So Lada can help the men to connect to their feminine nature. So if you put those two together, Svavol represents a balance of male and female within everything, right? Come on, Lord Maximus. Come on over. So, so Lada can help you, especially women. So if women feel oppressed, to call upon Lada. Lada is not about suppressing the feminine power. She's elevating. At the same time, Lada is not about suppressing the male, the men in society. We're talking about equilibrium here. Lada is about growth. Literal growth and figuratively, figuratively growth. So we're talking about literal and figurative growing. Lada is about learning from life. Lada is about learning the lessons of life. So she's about life. And the evolution of life, the evolution of the mind, and the evolution of one's soul. So she's personified as a life-giving forces of the earth, of nature. So, as you know, I do not use notes or scripts, so just bear with me if you're writing things down. You may need to leave a little bit open. I also, shoot, I should have made an announcement. I'll make an announcement at the end of the video because my friends are getting married and they're expecting. <laughs> and thinking about marriage and expecting, I might as well bring it up. My two friends are getting married. She's a goddess of marriage. And they're expecting. She's a goddess of children. They're going to be parents. So she is good with helping one to be a good parent. Guiding them to the right resources. Guiding them to the right information. So, yeah, she deals with all that. So I might as well bring that up. She is also, you got, not only the people overlook this, and I'm going to bring this up. She is the goddess of engagement parties. She's also the goddess of the honeymoon part. Right after the marriage, she deals with the reception. She deals with all of that. And she's also deals with anything to do with marriage. So if you're having a first anniversary, a second anniversary, she deals with the anniversary of that day. She also, in modern times, in mod now this is modern times, she is by some being used, now some Slavic people in modern times, not all of them, uh, you know, the ones in America, people who are the Slavic pagans, may use her as a goddess of Valentine's Day. You know, dealing with love, sex, dating, all that stuff. And unions. She's also could be celebrated 
on Mother's Day. But also definitely the vernal equinox is when she arises. But her her season is summer. So on the summer solstice, call on her. Call upon her full blooming life. If I was to use the phase of the moon, so I would use the full moon for her. When the moon is at its, the, the full moon. So you can use her in full moon rituals. Again, you can use her, her for uh, planetary Venus rituals. So modern times, I've, I've known people to connect her day with Friday because of Venus. So. Again, this is more modern times. So, uh, <laughs> and the modern neo pagans here in America. What else can I talk about her? Come on, help me out, Lord Maximus. Come on over. So, she also deals with art. Not just music, but also art. She is a graceful figure. She is full of joy. And she brings that joy to all of us. She is... She brings great blessings to musicians and artists. So her people are mothers, wives. She also loves artists and musicians. She also deals with, uh, ba she deals with, actually in modern days, babysitters who take care of children. And uh, she also will deal with the midwife or those who help children be born to the world, world like OBGYN doctor, but also the midwife. She was also dealing with the god goddess of wet nurses. And what that is, is if the mother wasn't at one time able to produce enough milk, there could be a mother that had more than enough milk and could take the baby and nurse. So that deals with wet nurses. That's what it basically means, a wet nurse. She's also deals with ch people who take care of young children. You think of preschools and kindergarten very young children. So she is a goddess that can be called upon for protection and a goddess of guidance and a goddess to be called upon wisdom and knowledge. Like I said, she feeds the mind. She helps one to connect with all of nature. So if you want to connect with trees, with flowers, if you want to connect your energy to your garden, she's your goddess to turn to. So what else can I talk about her? 39 minutes, wow. A uh, few more things, I guess. She is... A goddess of creativity. I don't know if I went over that.
Max, I only see your tail. Max. Come on, Maximus. So, her worship, when, unfortunately, the Catholics took over the world, the Christianity, her worship was then transferred to the Virgin Mary. Especially, so, if you look up in, uh, when, when those who were converted, I'm trying to think when it, final convert, like, when most of, when a big chunk of Slavic tribes and clans and nations were converted, they turned, they turned to the Virgin Mary. So, she is coming back. There's a lot that has been lost, but there are those who pass the knowledge from one Slavic pagan to another, even during in Christianity. But a lot what we have has been preserved by Christians. So she is a goddess. Her statue is tall. I forgot to say that she is a tall woman with long blonde hair, long wavy blonde hair. Sometimes has like uh, corn flowers as a crown or different flowers. And again, this came from Belarus. Wonderful art. You can get this and see her name is on it. You can get this at Amazon. And it's through uh, an artist that sells on Amazon. So anyways... I hope you learned a lot about this goddess. I do want to make an announcement. My two friends are getting married. And I'm going to the wedding. <laughs> it's going to be a wonderful celebration. And they're expecting congratulations to you too. I love you. And, uh. Yeah, that's the message. Do you have anything to say to anybody? Lord Maximus, come on down. Come on down from there. Come on down. Do you have any last words for everybody for today? Well, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate this. I do this for free. So, the money that you would have given me on a Patreon account. Whether it be a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars. Give it to a charity that helps women and children. Especially people who have been dis displaced in war. Alexa, turn off alarm. So sorry about that. So those, I forgot about my alarm. So, please help uh, also think of St. Jude's Hospital or Make-A-Wish. That would be good to donate. Or you can please adopt a cat or a dog or a rabbit. Or at least, you know, donate some, you know old towels that have been that are uh, still good they, they're looking for towels and blankets and sheets so instead of getting rid of them donate them 
um, please share my video with your friends and family and as always you're awesome and as always blessed be